Compliance monitoring is not going to be done principally by the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. Rather, it's going to be done by the sector regulators. So it gives us comfort that the regulators are trying to work together and that the people that actually know the different sectors and the industries will be the ones actually trying to implement. So Financial Reporting Council may not understand my peculiar issues if I were an architectural firm. But I suppose that Arcon would understand. So if I go to them and say, I'm not able to do more than this, they would understand because they work and regulate my industry. The final thing is the penalty for infractions will be determined by the sector regulators. When Prof was talking, he was saying that there are going to be guidelines that will be provided by the sector regulators. So what that basically means is that the sector regulators are the ones that will determine whether you need to be penalized when there are infractions. And the other thing to note is that if you're a private entity and you don't work in any of those spaces where people are regulated, then it means that you would take a best of judgment approach, which means you will determine to what extent you want to be compliant. Ethics talks about the culture of a business. What are the things that are important to you beyond your bottom line? What are those other things that matter? What culture, what are your values as an institution? That is what you know, ethics really mean. And sustainability talks about how your business interacts with the environment and the people. So in terms of the environment, it means, are you going to just be doing business and turning a profit without caring what the impact of that business has on the environment? If you're into manufacturing or production, do you care about the ozone layer? Are you doing things that are depleting the ozone layer? Are you putting effluent you know, in, into the environment and what have you? And of course, it also talks about you know, people. So how much do you care about the people within your organization, your staff, your directors? How do your actions or decisions influence the people that are inside? And how do they influence people that are in your, your immediate constituency? So your neighbors, the people around you, are you going to park cars just anyhow on your road and cause a, become a nuisance on the street? You know, things like that. And it's important to note that the way investors look at enterprises these days is not just about the bottom line. These things are becoming increasingly important. And the way people assess or value performance of enterprises are beginning to have you know, a higher you know, ranking or rating for ethics and sustainability. I think um, decision making is important. What is the quality of decision making that the board is able to achieve? Do they have the capacity? Do they have the knowledge to take decisions that are in the best interest of the company? This is one of the major areas of corporate governance that people understand, right? Because it's the area that has to do with audit, internal controls, and compliance. So many people have understanding about assurance and how it works. Assurance does not mean audit alone. So many people will say audit and assurance as though they are one and the same thing. So assurance basically means being able to provide adequate information to stakeholders on the company's operations, the company's financial position, the efficiency of its policies, and compliance with statutory obligations. So many times within an organization, the board is responsible for assurance. However, there are some core functions within that organization that will determine the strength of your assurance. So you have like the internal auditor, you have your head of risk management, um, sometimes you would have your head of legal also heading or being a part of your core compliance team. Then shareholder relations. Many times we look at directors as the principal you know, entity within an organization. But the core shareholders and the most important shareholders in any organization are actually its owners. So the rights of, primary, of this primary stakeholder group and the obligations that are owed to them has been emphasized very strongly within the code. So in today's world, any business or any board where the management or any company where the management or its board are afraid of scrutiny, then they have a serious you know, governance problem. Every stakeholder within 
the organization has a right to know or to have information about the affairs of the organization. So scrutiny of corporate actions must be encouraged. Management and board must be willing to provide timely, accurate, and clear information to all stakeholders. Remember that the word here is stakeholders and not um, shareholders. So stakeholders would include other people other than the shareholders. It would include your staff. They should have a voice. They should be able to give opinion. They should be able to ask questions where necessary. And the, print, the core principle that underlines transparency is openness and accountability. Accountability is very, very important. I would want to emphasize the role of company secretaries on boards. They have such a very important role to play in the outcome of an organization's corporate governance architecture. So I just want to talk about it a little bit. Mr. Amy was saying that a company secretary is not a director. They are not. But a lot of times, they wield so much you know, influence. They are the ones that actually tie the board together. A lot of times, they have in such you know, retinue of information, even much more than the directors. A lot of times, directors come and go, but you will find that the company secretaries, a lot of times, you know, are a bit more stable. You know, and they have you know, history, they have knowledge, and they have information, particularly around compliance. So when you sit on the board, you should be able to rely on your company secretary to guide as to what are the boundaries of our operations, what does the law say we can do, what does the law say that we cannot do. And when directors are out of line, it is the responsibility of the company secretary sometimes to point them in the right direction and say, legally, we are not allowed to do this or we're not allowed to do this. So you should not have a figurehead as company secretary that does not have a voice or cannot you know, say, you know, when things are not being done properly. So under the code, there's actually an obligation for companies to conduct governance evaluation annually. But the FRCN has been very, very considerate to say that it can be done internally, annually, and then you would have an external person conduct that evaluation at least once in three years. But for companies that are public or that are regulated, I'm very certain that you will still need to do this, you know, on an annual basis. Um, remuneration. I think there was one important thing that the code also, you know, mentioned about remuneration that I don't think I've heard in the room today, so I'm just going to talk about it. So basically, compensation must always be value-driven. Must always be value-driven. And the code also has a provision for clawback and says that when compensation has been given unfairly or has not been merited, then the company actually has an obligation to demand that that compensation be given back. So every entity enterprise is now expected to have a whistleblowing policy. And basically, what does that say? It says that you must create a platform within your organization where individuals, whether internal or external, that have information about infractions or things that are not going on well, can report and they will be protected. Their, there will be no disclosure of their person. They will be given you know, some kind of confidential you know, protection and all of that. And of course, they will not be shamed because of the information that they have given. Now, how does this work? Because when you want to whistleblow, it's probably going to impact on some of the core people who are driving the corporate governance of the organization. I think it's important that we talk about it. Um, I once used to sit on, uh, on the board of um, a public um, company as company secretary. And I remember when we were trying to develop our whistleblowing policy and you know, we were having conversations and I was saying, okay, so if the whistleblowing is in relation to the action of the chairman, what do we do? You know, so we had to have different lines how this whistleblowing will work. So we had to integrate some external you know, parties into the whole process. Because sometimes it may be in relation to actions of management, it may be in relation to actions of the board, it may be in relation to actions of the chairman. So in some cases, people will say, oh, maybe there will be independent lines. One of them will be the line of the chairman, the other one will be the line of the CEO. So if it is the CEO, then you can go to the chairman. What if it's the chairman? So sometimes you will want to introduce maybe an external party maybe an external consultant or your external auditors or whatever. 
right? And of course, the communication must be such that the people don't have to disclose who they are. It's good to have avenues where you can have, you know, interactions with your shareholders, particularly for private businesses that are growing, you know, bigger. Ensure that there is always a line of communication. You want to have an, um, an event in the office. So assume that Deal HQ was a company and we had shareholders and we're having an event like this. It's helpful to extend invitations to your, your shareholders. It's all part of stakeholder engagement. Many times the reason why shareholders are aggressive is because they always feel cut out. So they come to the meeting and they are so aggressive and everything you say, they are, their hands are up and you know, they are asking, have gone blazing and I mean the AGM then heads south. But sometimes these things can be avoided with you know, adequate um, stakeholder engagement. One of the reasons why we're having these conversations is so that the private sector people can begin to have a shift in position in the way they, they, they see the code. So it's not in, intended to be a burden, it's intended to be something that would actually capitulate them to growth. And thankfully, the approach that the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria has taken is an adaptive and flexible approach, which means that private entities are supposed to comply only to the extent that is reasonable for them, you know, without jeopardizing, you know, their ability to continue to run their businesses and run it profitably. So a, a few things, um, it has adopted the apply and explain approach, which basically means that you would do your best to comply and you would also explain the reason why you have chosen to comply up to whatever level that you are able to achieve. I think that it has also entrenched, you know, governance, it has, you know, entrained the principles of sustainability and um, business ethics, which is very important. Like I was saying, you know, during my presentation that now investors are more, you know, savvy. Gone are the days when you are assessing a company only based on their bottom line alone. You want to know what the company's culture and their values are, and you want to know, you know, how much of the company's, you know, operations is actually supporting growth of, you know, the broader, you know, economy. So those are some of the things. I think it's something that we should all embrace. I think that um, the future looks good. I hope that um, Financial Reporting Council works, you know, closely with sector regulators and ensures that, you know, there's a level playing field and that all regulators are at the same level in terms of knowledge and capacity to actually make, you know, compliance a reality. So those are our expectations and thank you.